This is episode 41. Like always, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help your girl out. And let's get started. I would like to shout a few of you out, but honestly, today has been such a taxing day. I honestly did not even have the energy or even wanted to come film this video, but I've been committed and I just want to get this out. It's likely, it is currently 11, 8, 11 p.m. <laughs> By the time this even gets on YouTube, it's going to be probably like 2, 3 in the morning. So, and after i edit it it's i'm gonna try to make this short and quick because I'm, I'm very tired i've been up since five in the morning it's been a very taxing day for me and things have just not been going the greatest so i just want to be committed and get this done but i'm tired so forgive me yeah uh did i say don't like con i mean i don't know if i already said it please don't forget to like comment and subscribe and let's get started girl i'm so tired I'm, I'm literally trying to think of what the word i'm looking for and i have no idea what the word is this episode further sh we'll just say showcase that's not the word i'm looking for but i can't think of the word right now and further showcase that production is really trying to pit these two black girls against each other to have a moment and also to deter away from the other couples in the house and basically get rid of one of them at least. They don't want as many black people up in this villa like that. Um, that's what it's giving to me. Y'all can see it how you want to see it. But the way things happen doesn't make sense. Because let's keep it for real. The amount of fights other people in this villa have had. So this is the first time Ella and um, Whitney had a tiff. Or the first time that... Whitney is at anything, honestly, in this house. And y'all chose to go have a situation where they're going to go outside of the villa to, like, basically, you want you wanted them to fight some more so you could have more footage. But luckily, that didn't happen, even though Ella was doing a little too much again. But it was given that you're trying to get a rise out of them. You're trying to make more of a moment to push whatever narrative that you want. And I know a couple, someone, um... Y'all, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm not even gonna do shout outs today just because I'm so tired. I don't wanna have to like leave and go look for the thing. Like, I'm just, I'm really tired. Like, I wanna go to bed. Um, and I still have to edit this. So it's gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. But shout out to you. Sorry for not adding you, but you said that apparently there's a lawsuit that's going on with regards to how Love Island treats black women specifically. Or maybe it's just black hairs, but I think it was black women. I'm glad. Because there is definitely a difference in the way that they push a narrative and the way how they could have shown Catherine having a redemption arc and they chose not to. They did. And for me, like everything I've said with regards to the Catherine Scott situation, every, honestly, everything I've said since I've been recording this thing stands. Everything. I stand by everything I've said based on what I saw, based on me analyzing criti critically, you know, like putting things together when I'm just like, mm, something seems odd, right? And even in me going in on Catherine, and I did, I saw the interview that she did with Will N. I don't know how to say his last name. I saw that interview with Ellen there. Girl, you played yourself because I told you this Ellen dude was a, I didn't trust him, okay? I know you don't know me. You can't listen to me, but you should trust me. Excuse me. But, um, yeah, it's it's not a surprise that Love Island it caters to a white audience, okay? And i.e. we see based on the winners often. We even see based on the amount of black people or other um, ethnicities that come in there. We always know it's a majority going to be white, okay? And yes, I understand the UK is majority white, okay? It's a European country, I get it, but... We know how Love Island is, okay? Let's keep it fucking for real. If you're here, you know I'm going to talk about race because race is important. And we know how the world treats black people and especially black women, okay? So this narrative that they're trying to paint of the angry black woman that's just rowdy, et cetera, et cetera. Like when it's just going off, having her little Faye 2.0 moment or Faye going off, et cetera. All these other motherfuckers that go off. Ooh, they're sassy. They're fiery. 
But let a black girl just sit there calmly and have fucking Ella yelling basically at her. But she's the bad one. And no, yo, the fake ass motherfuckers in this villa, Molly, Jess, Zach, all these motherfuckers are fake as fuck in this villa. Molly, I'm gonna fucking slap her. I really wanted to slap her ass. But, ooh, girl, before, let me let me get into this. I really wanna make sure this is not a long video. And you know I can talk, okay? So I'm gonna try to let's just get through this. So the episode starts off with Ella chatting um, to Ty and she cries. And um, she just thinks that it's just about the shower thing. And apparently the shower thing is not, this is not a one-time thing. So this is something she does every day where she prioritizes herself to take the shower first so she doesn't have to wait for anybody. Okay, so this is not a one-up one up thing. She does this all the time, okay? And y'all really not understanding that this is not about a fucking shower. Again, if you've seen Whitney and the way she moves and how she handles things, clearly she's a logical person. Clearly she's smart, okay? She's not someone that's just gonna go off of emotion. You know what I mean? So as I was saying in yesterday's episode, this is not the first time something has happened where Ella has shown her selfish ways. It's not the first time. And Ella couldn't even acknowledge that at all. Even after Whitney apologized to her twice, the bitch couldn't even do it. And that sh and Whitney was being selfless in that moment by just saying, you know what, let me be the b bigger person and apologize. This b girl couldn't even do it in two on two occasions, okay? But she's not selfish. Girl, please. Anyways, so she cries. Ty, you know, hey, he comforts her like he should. But this is the thing where I'm just like, Ty's a bitch. Ty is a bitch. And when I say that, this is not some derogatory thing about like, a girl or a guy being a bitch. When I say a bitch is a bitch, a bitch is a, it can be woman, man, anyone. She ties a bitch. And I say this because if he is really, if he was like a good person or a good boyfriend, if you want to call him, well, he's not a boyfriend, whatever the fuck they are. If he was like a good partner to her, right? You see what Lockin was, and I'm going to go in on Lockin as well, but I'm just saying, you see how Lockin was just like trying to make peace and just saying, just shout with her. Obviously, you care about her, whatever, right? Ty is just like, I prepared you well. Like, you know, I'm, I'm even if it was a joke, like he means that shit, right? He, instead of trying, instead of trying to peace, like the situation to his girl and his girl's mate in this house can get along. He's just basically like, no, nah, fuck that bitch. And you're salty because... Apparently, later he tell, he tells us to lock in that when he had once told Ella, like, don't just go for the pretty boys or whatever, you know? And that's why he made that dig at her about, you know, the, the challenge saying, it's just not nice guys, you know, or nice guys can treat you bad too. Because you know you're not a nice guy. Because you treat girls like shit. So you have been harboring this against her. And then you're talking about a rivalry? Bitch, you're the one that wants a fucking rivalry. How is the person that's the winner thinking about you as the rival? You're thinking about them as a the rival. Let's keep it, keep it, um, let's be clear. When they found out that they, that Winnie and them had won, uh, the favorite couple. If you remember when they came back, he told Ella, well, why aren't we the favorite couple? You jealous as fuck. All the fucking shit that you've been, all the fucking manipulation that you've been doing, all the pepper tearing that you've been doing this whole time, and you're still not the fucking, um, public's favorite. Ty's a fucking bitch that always wants to be a busybody and have his fucking mouth in everybody's business. Yo, Ty is worse than Mitch. He's worse than Mitch, okay? But nobody ever comes for him because he has his fucking minions in that whole fucking house. One, Zach and Molly are basically the same. Sammy is his best mate in the house. So Jess is stupid. They're all the same, okay? They're all fake as fuck and they'll always, fuck, they'll always fall behind his lead, Okay? And I think that's super pathetic, honestly. But Ty, instead of trying to find like a, a solution to help the situation, he's just like, nah, fuck that bitch. Let's, let's not even deal with her. She's our rival, but it's just me and you, okay? We're gonna be Bonnie and Clyde. That's what he was fucking doing. I'm just like, that's really pathetic. And that's not how you should be moving. Cause obviously you don't like her friend. And I'm sorry, Ella is one of those girls, unfortunately. And she said this, in, in a couple times in the episode like i'm not gonna let the situation of me and um whitney get with get with what i have with ty because i'm not gonna let that rip. what the fuck does that do what? they don't correlate they don't correlate you having this issue with your friend does not correlate with you having an issue with your man okay you can still have a good experience with him and then try to mend that and i'm sorry she's one of those that's like she can throw her friends away just to be with her man her man her man but then when you something happens, Whitney's the one that you've been going to run to. And all these fucking bitches in this house, 
Okay, every time they've had an issue, Whitney was there consoling, taking care of, being there for you, giving you good advice, etc., 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 right? But one thing happens, and you, you're willing to throw away your friendship. And let's keep it real. When you came back from Castor and Moore, Ty called you a pass around. He said, I thought she was mine, but she was just my turn. He called you a fucking pass around. He, he disrespected the fuck out of you. Yet you are crying, groveling to get his ass back after he's fucking disrespected you time and time again. But Whitney calls your ass selfish, bitch. And now you take issue and you're willing to dead a friendship because someone called you, called you out on something that you portrayed over and over again. But you can't even acknowledge that you are selfish. Girl, Ella, please act right. And I, I, I'm... Whoo... Let me, I, you know what? I wanted this to be a short episode or a short review, but it might get longer because I'm, I'm barely, I just started, okay? I'm on my third bulletin and I have quite a bit to go. <laughs> Anyways, um, Ty also goes to say that Whitney can't handle it, handle the banter back so she can dish it, but she can't take it. And I don't know, maybe there's some truth to that because many of them said that. But then again, the people that were saying that were all his minions. You know what I mean? Oh, here goes my fucking phone dying. Oh, my phone died. This whole day has just been shit, honestly. Like, I've been watched Love Island since morning. I was going to record the video like I always do, just so I can get it done and have the rest of my day to do my things. And then when I came to record, I hadn't charged and my I hadn't charged the camera, I hadn't charged the replacement batteries, nothing. So I couldn't record. And <sighs> I'm gonna do my best to get through this. So now this should just charge in here. I gotta hold it like this. <sighs> Anyways, so I think I was saying that Ty was saying that Whitney can't take she can dish it, but she can't take it. Um, from what we've seen, clearly Whitney can have a conversation. She, um, and I think we're all prone to like being stubborn about things like myself included. Okay. But I think, um, Whitney is somebody who can take criticism. Okay. Uh, I don't think that's an issue for her. And I think y'all are just saying because she is someone that is very direct in what she's saying that seems that that. She can't take her direct back. I don't think that's what it is. I really don't. Because Ty, <laughs> Mr. She can um, she can dish it, but she can't take it. You stay dishing shit out to everybody all day, every day. Ain't nobody called you out on nothing. Okay? Ain't nobody called you out on a goddamn thing. Anyways, so after her little chat, Molly, hmm, Molly, you know, that little sympathy I had for you when um, Ty, what, what, whatever his name is, Zach Kiss, Katie or whatever in New York, fuck that sympathy, okay? Fuck you. So this bitch comes over and I'm, I'm sorry, I felt like she was happy. I feel like the way she was trying to like um, back Ella was because she has residual resentment for Whitney because Whitney and um, Zach were chatting and getting on because you know she's addicted. You know how she was happy that Whitney got rid of Katie. Remember her smirking and smiling and then talking about how she was happy that she was gone. It's giving that now that there's cracks between Whitney and Ella's situation that now it's like you can worm your way in and be like oh yeah you did nothing wrong you're the good guy in here nothing you did nothing wrong right that's what it's giving it's giving residual resentment that you're finally getting to showcase big ass bitch anyways so the girls fake Jess and Molly come and Molly just first one to speak yeah you did nothing wrong I heard everything like blah blah blah, blah. shut the fuck up bitch like you it's like because you and your dude even though you accept in the back or whatever the situation is like you're it's like you're trying to find a way to get in and be in the girl group when you're you you've never been in because you didn't want to be in okay but it's just really fake and then Jess we already know Jess is fake as fuck the bitch talks out of both sides of her neck all the time okay when she's in Whitney's face she's somebody else when she's in Ella's face she's somebody else oh you, you're not selfish you did nothing wrong thick ass anyways moving on and Molly goes to say I agree with I agree with everything you said and just I already said doesn't think she's selfish and Ella um says that she's bringing me back what'd she say bad shower okay I don't know why it says shower <laughs> girl <laughs> I wrote, she's bringing me bad shower. Anyways, Ella said that Whitney's bringing her bad energy and 
basically she's not a friend i'm sorry ella you're really self-absorbed if somebody cannot criticize you and you take it like this is the same thing ty was talking about she can dish she can't take it when you're talking about whitney i don't think that's what it is because your girl can't can't handle it at all somebody's called you out on something like if this was a true friendship for you this is not something you'd want to throw away because the only reason Whitney was like okay but we're not besties then is because again you started the whole fucking situation yesterday it wasn't about the fucking challenge in the um in the dress room you're saying like you basically act like you're family you're not family like the way you talk to me so okay we're not close like that anymore. And it's not saying that like we're family, but it's like, you know, you get close with friends like that where it's like your, your life family. Like, no, you try to be like, okay, bitch, we ain't like that. So chill the fuck out. That's what you try to do, right? To create a distance so she can respect you and whatever boundary that you want. Fine. And then to add insult to injury, you went to say, oh, which, um, what number are you in your family? Oh, you're the last one. Oh, it shows. <laughs> okay. You started that and you thought she was going to shut her mouth and just take it. No, bitch. And then she told you, bitch, you're so much as fuck. And apparently, because I watched the interview that Catherine did, no, this is not the first time you've heard that you're selfish. It's just that the girls have like joked about it and said it to you in a more sweet way. But it's not the first time. And it's not just Whitney. So clearly you've been doing things where you're you're selfish. Again, even that situation with the, um with Nell, right? When she's like, well, this is my spot. Again, I see about what I said before. But that shows something, you know, you being selfish. You wanting everybody to cater to you shows that you're being selfish. And I do agree that you have a princess mentality. You think everybody's just going to like bow down to you. Bitch, no, it don't work like that. If a friend that cares about you says that you're selfish, and yes, it's hurtful to hear that you're the most selfish person in the world. It is. But bitch, if it's the truth, it's the fucking truth. Okay? And like Whitney does later say, maybe I could have said it better, um, with more love than I did. But girl, you started, you're the one talking, you know, like, we're not family, not acting for family, basically. And yeah, it shows that you're fucking immature. And yeah, no, you started it. You bring whatever energy you bring, I'm going to I'm gonna bring it right back to you. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. So Locken is not on Whitney's side because I'm sorry when... Oh, okay, he's not as bad as how uh, uh, Medi was, you know, with the Jess situation, right? How he was just like, boom, 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 right? But he's more subtle with it. So when Whitney's telling him what happened, and he's like, oh, we just about the shower thing. It's like he wasn't really trying to be on her side. He later, like, fixed up a little bit. But for me, it was giving more so, like, challenging Whitney with the situation rather than be like, okay, I hear what you're saying. Oh, okay, so it really wasn't that. It was, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sorry. I don't think... Just when he goes and later, later, she says to Jess, like, it's like he, I don't know if I can trust this because it's like he went and read the Whitney Bible. So it just seems too good to be true. It is too good to be true. I'm sorry. I don't trust him. And I'm sorry. And the ways that he hasn't spoken up for you, hasn't stood up for you several times. I don't trust that. I don't. And I don't back. I don't, I don't support him. Again, we can interchange you with any fucking guy. We will still vote for Whitney. And I hope if she's the one that wins and she picks, she um, keeps money for herself because fuck you. Like, I, I, I'm i sorry. I'm not here for him. Okay. There's some things that he did. Where I was like, okay, cool. But like, I just think he just says it and I'm not, I, I'm not seeing it in the actions. When it comes time for you to actually stand up for me against when the world's against me, I don't really see it like that. I don't, maybe I'm tripping, but mm, it's not given for me. Um, he says that he's on her side, but it, it ain't giving me that. But he says he agrees with her. I'm like, yeah, kind of, but yeah. Anyways, so in the confessionals, like it's already said, Whitney said that um, I love giving Princess energy and she stands by what she said. And I feel you like I'm one of those people. I'm very direct. And when you're a black woman that's direct, that says things like it is, everybody's always going to take that in as aggressive. I'm not going to sweeten it up for you so you can hear it better. It is what it is. Right. But when you are like that. People are going to view you as a, as the aggressor, even though you're not. And I think one of the things that's really fucked up in this episode for me everybody basically went to go um placate to ella, ella's feelings go support her because none of them bitches went to go check in on whitney you didn't check in on her but you went you showed your loyalties were with ella you didn't go check in on whitney to see how she was doing only Lockin did and he has to honestly right so i just thought it was really fucked up that ella was the one that was being if we're gonna even use the word aggressive in the situation like increasing her voice yelling basically at her and just because Whitney's not crying doesn't mean she's hurt by the things that, that have happened, okay? It's not because somebody weaponizes their fucking tears. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> like, I, I don't think she really likes me. She's not my friend. If she, she's calling me out. Like, you must really hate me. But shut up. 
We're just telling there's a truth about you, which you've heard before. It's not the first time, but now you want to weaponize your tears. And because you weaponize your tears, they're going to have your back. And the, the world's going to look at you as the fucking victim and her as the fucking aggressor. And that's the shit I don't like. I really don't. Moving on, I think um, before we move on, uh, Lockin says that um, he's proud of her basically and how she handled that she didn't raise her voice or anything. I mean, clearly we can see in the situation, Whitney was calm. She, she had, girl, the restraint that Whitney has. I wish I had, I wish I had an ounce of that. I just, I don't, I told y'all like me, <laughs> push me. And I, again, I'm working on that. I'm working on it, but push me, you will see. I, I am not one to be trifled with. <laughs> Please believe, okay? Anyways, so after that, um, uh, what's his name? Lock and hugs her and, you know, at least she has somebody that backs her. But he, he, I'm like this with him. And then we have Scott pulling uh, Ty and um, whatever his name is, Sammy. So he was just like, where is this coming from? I'm sorry. Ty has a hard on for Scott because it's it's, it's too much. Like, Every fucking time you're like, oh, this, that, this, that, this, that. And if our memory serves me right, please correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like in a, episode, a couple of episodes ago, wasn't he telling Ty, not Ty, wasn't, he tell, wasn't Ty telling Scott to like go for it with Abby? Am I tripping? I could have sworn there was some interaction where that happened. I could be tripping. If I am, please correct me below, but I could have sworn I remember that in an episode. But now you're wishwashy talking about, I don't think you care about her, whatever, whatever, whatever. Fine. You're entitled to your opinion. But why you got to put your mouth on everybody's business all the motherfucking time? Shut the fuck up. Mind your business. But I will say, though, I agree with Ty. Ty and Scott knows it's, it's the truth. You you might care about, um, and he, he that's all he stood on. He's like, I do care about her. But if they were to say, do you like her? That would be a different story. And I think he would be honest. I think he cares about Abby, but I don't think he likes her. Like, he's playing the game like everybody's playing the game. Like, in order to stay in this fucking villa, you have to be coupled up with somebody. So, they can have a friendship couple if they want, which I think he should have just said that's what it was going to be. I would have been okay with that. But for me, I'm like, if your only thing is you don't care about her, you don't have to believe that he cares about her. I do think he has some levels that he cares about her, but he doesn't like her. He doesn't like her. Like, we're, let's keep it a book, okay? The way he was with Catherine, remember when he used to talk to Catherine and he was looking at her, like, smiling like this? Y'all you, you have seen that video, right? He, please, you know, this girl is annoying, okay? He's just trying to get by, okay? <laughs> and I, I, don't, I don't fault him. And I think it's funny that Sammy, of all people, and he even said, like, if I was in your position, I would do the same. Bitch, you're doing the motherfucking same thing. What do you think you're doing? What are you doing? You don't fucking like Jess. You're not attracted to the fucking Jess. You know you're on a fucking game show. And it's smart for you to fucking just stay with her ass because you know the public likes her. So I might as well try to see if you can win some money. You're doing the same motherfucking thing. So please shut up. And it's funny how Tyreek always has a mouth for everybody, right? But look at your friends. Look at how the way they move. You ever question them? You don't say we don't fucking rate Jess. Shut up. Like, honestly, Ty has a hard on for freaking Scott. Like, what is it? What Are you jealous? Like, I know y'all both play soccer. I don't know if there's a difference in what levels you play or whatever. But, like, it's giving jealousy. You're obsessed. Like, it's giving single white female. Like, what the fuck? You're so in on him all the goddamn time. Like, back up. Shut up. Leave him alone. Oh, my God. Like, it's getting too much. And, I, honestly, what I want Scott to do... Fuck like at the end where we fucking hug and shake hands. Fuck that. Cuss his ass out. Put him in his fucking place like how you put Mitch in his fucking place the other day. Put Ty in his motherfucking place. What the fuck you going to you want to fucking get rowdy? Get rowdy, bitch. You're not about to hit me. The fuck? Like Ty does too much. Like shut up. Busy body, busy body all day, every day. Shut up. Ugh. And Sammy has enough to tell Scott not to pretend. You doing a good job of that. Hey, Ty, you don't got to buy shit. You don't got to buy it. Do you buy that Sammy likes Jess? That he's in love with Jess? He's only fucking saying he's in love with Jess because you told Ellie you're in love with her. Okay. Love my ass. Moving on. Um, Nell and Mitch. Okay, so Nell... I guess Nell likes him or Nell's trying to sell that she likes him because they were kissed up. They were cut. Well, they were cuddling. Well, they were sat. And the, by the fire pit and kissing. I was like, okay. All right. Interesting. And then they get a text and um, Jess and Sammy are going to go to the hideaway. 
all the girls going to help her get ready. Okay, all the girls. Wendy was there as well. Ella was there as well. Okay, they hope they, they go help her get ready. Before um, the text was read, she was sat with Whitney talking. I'm sure you're pretending like you're on Whitney's side when you're with Ellie, you're on her side. You're fucking two faces fuck. Like, you really are. But, anyways, so yeah, they get to go to the hideaway. I don't really care. Um, Sammy wore those same pants he wore at the, um, the Heart Rate Channel, ch the Heart Rate Challenge. And um, Sammy said when they're in the hideaway, I pretty much, I think he said I pretty much, he said I pretty much always knew it was you. Please don't insult my intelligence. Please. <sighs> Anyways, and just says, where's the condoms? And it looked like they fucked, they probably fucked. And that's why he's like, oh, let me, mm, okay, that was kind of nice. You're going to be my girlfriend until you get out of the villa. Moving on, in the morning... Lockin um, tells Whitney that he wants to have a breakfast with Ty, him, and with Ty and Ella. And Whitney's like, no. Okay, let's, let's just not even try to do all that. But again, at least he's trying to make the peace, you know, unlike Ty. And then we have Ella, Molly. So in the morning chat, Ella, Molly, and I'm um, just are chatting. And I'm just like, you fake bitches. Um, and, um... Again, she Ella said this thing about like she doesn't want the situation with Whitney to accept, uh, fuck up her situation with Ty. Well, how does how does that correlate? How how does that correlate? Like I swear to God, she's one of those girls that will probably just like once she has her man, she's gonna like get this discard her friends. I don't know if I already said this earlier, girl. I'm tired. It's almost fucking midnight. Like I'm really tired right now. But that's what she gives me. She's like I'm gonna. When I'm just gonna be with my man, and only when something happens, and I'll when he we break up or he hurts me, then I'll hit them up again. No, if, if it's your man, your man, your man, go stay by him, go stay by his side, stay by his side. Mm -mm. But anyways, so Lockin and Scott and Mitch chat about all of their situations. Whitney says she stands by when she was talking to Abby and Nell, and Nell says, "I mean, yes, I get where you're coming from, but maybe like she she kind of like helped to reason a little bit, and I was like, okay, cool." Um, and she, like she said, I get it was a challenge, but she essentially threw me under the bus. And for me, it was like a backhanded way for her to really say something that she's been feeling, but by hiding it in a challenge. And I do agree with that. And honestly, Ty and Ella ended up alluding to that anyway. I wish I, I anyways. And then Zach is fucking piping up, talking about, oh yeah, she can dish, she can't take. Fuck you. You're just fucking, you're salty because she called you out. Thick ass bitch. I can't stand his ass. Oh, I, girl, I want to, I seriously want to fall asleep. I don't even know if I'm going to have energy to edit this video. Hey, I need to, I need to, I need to. And um, Ella and Ty chat and she says that she's happy for Whitney and Lockin and, you know, she's been there for her. No, the bit been there for her was later on, but she says she's happy for Whitney and Lockin and it's just whatever. And then Ty says, um, they're trying to make a rivalry. No, you're trying to make a rivalry because why would the winners rival with the losers? i.e. favorite couple to not favorite couple like you get what i'm trying to say like why that logically doesn't make sense you're the one that's like it's his mask has been cracked like i've seen through his shit since the beginning okay his mask has been cracked he's shown us that he's a fuck boy like hey i just i cannot i'm like um they they said basically for the um the smug challenge they picked them because Wit and Lockin were chosen by the public. They literally said that. Okay, I'm saying this this way, but please go back and watch that episode. They said something along those lines. So you basically just picked them as a cop out, like how the other people did. And if that was the case, fine. But the extra that Ty added on to it was giving, it wasn't just that. It was giving jealousy. And I'm sorry, that's what it is. Y'all are jealous that they won favorite couple. And you've already said, like Ty has said it. Like, why did they get picked for a couple? And then Ella was like, well, you're my favorite. You're jealous. It's okay. <laughs> oh, la la. Anyways, um... Oh, this is the part where she can dish, she can't take it. <sighs> Whitney says she don't want to be fake and she's not going to be fake. Lockin says, I got you. And I'm glad that I'm, she, he mentioned here that I'm glad you didn't raise your voice in the conversation. Y'all, I'm confusing all of the, I said that at the beginning. I'm saying it now. Sorry, I'm tired. 
Anyways, um, so then a text comes, and this is the part where I'm just like, production is doing too much. It's your y'all are really doing too much, okay? So all the upheavals, all the crazy that's happened. Let's go back even to face season. All the shit that bitch did in that season. Did you take her outside of the villa so she can have a one-on-one -on -one with the people that she fucking violated in that fucking villa? No, you didn't. Because when it's a white bitch that's doing some fucking shit, y'all are just gonna let it slide. Oh, it's just her being fiery, sassy, whatever. But then they have a fucking misunderstanding, a, a, a heated discussion. You're gonna send them out the villa for what? Why? Honestly, it's giving. We want to paint. The, we want to edit it in a certain way so we can get rid of the, one of them. And now that you've made Whitney public enemy number one, it doesn't matter if the public keeps her in. Unfortunately, I mean, unless like they, I feel like they have a. There's an episode when it's later. There um, later on in the as the season is ending, even they have a vote where the couples have to each vote for who they want to basically send home. And this is not like a public vote. I guarantee you when this happens, cause even Mitch, I don't think will have Whitney's back, honestly. I want him to, but I don't think he would. Like, I think the only person that would sincerely have Whitney's back is um, Scott. But when it comes to the couples voting, they're gonna get rid of Whitney. Like I, I don't, I don't. Unfortunately, I don't see her making it to the finals the way things are going right now. I, 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 I hate that for her because honestly, she deserves to win this shit. This girl has been carrying the show and Ty as well. I'll give him to him too, even though he's fucking crazy and he's a mess. But um, oh, I'm so exhausted. But they've definitely been carrying the show. I'll give him. I'll give it to them. Even Ella with her pouty fucking ways all the goddamn time. But Whitney has been here, okay. And I, the way it's going, I feel like they're going to vote her out. The Islanders are going to vote her out. So the fucking texts come where basically Whitney and Ella have to go go have a one-on-one. -on -one, okay? And Lockin says, don't tell her that she's the most selfish person again. And Whitney's like, I stand my ground. I'm sorry. Again, these are the moments where as a partner, if you wanted to say that to her, say that to her private. Don't say it to her in the public because that's showing that you're backing Ella. That's what that's showing. It's showing that you're not loyal. And I don't fuck with that. And I know when you don't fuck with that either. Moving on. Um, so first we see Ella and Whitney in the dressing room. Like they go up together in the dressing room. And then somehow Ella and, and Ty are in the dressing room. And Whitney and Lockin are in the bedroom. So they're separated. And I'm like, why? But okay. And I feel like this is production. I made them go do that because they're probably just going to be there and not say anything. And then it's like Ty was like thinking... He said, he said, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. I've been training you for this. I don't care if y'all are going to fucking say that's fucking banter, whatever. It's fucked up. It's showing that honestly, if he cared, he cared about her and he knows that like Whitney and her had a friendship, he would want her and Whitney to work it out. Not say, I've trained you well, like to stand your ground, all this shit. And I'll get into to Jess in a little bit as well. But yeah, so they're all basically in each. It's like they literally painted this to be like a boxing match. So Ty is Ella's coach and I guess Locken is um, Whitney's coach. But Locken was just, he wanted peace and Taiwan's war okay um and as they are preparing to leave the villa Jess comes and hugs Ella and says stand your ground I'm sorry but your friends I mean I know they're closer but I'm like but you're close with um, Whitney as well okay okay after when Ty said I trained you for this you know Ella says I'm not scared of Whitney I'm sorry when we had this conversation, Whitney was calm, cool, and collected. What were you doing? You were raising your voice. You were acting out. You were raising your voice. You were acting out. Whitney was cool, calm, and collected. What is this narrative that you're trying to push? First of all, you victimized yourself by crying, okay? And now you're saying, I'm not scared of Whitney. What is that supposed to mean? I know you're trying to say like, I mean, I'm going to speak my mind. I'm not afraid to speak my mind, but what is I'm not scared of Whitney shit supposed to mean? I don't like that. I don't. So as Ella and Whitney leave, Ella um, went out the door first and bitch couldn't even have the decency to keep the door open. Whitney had to come open her door again. And even when they were coming back, she did the same thing. She didn't even leave the door open for her. Fine. Okay. You're mad. You want to act petty? Fine. Do you? So... Before the conversation starts, Ella's drinking her water when he's just sat there. 
Yeah, it was awkward. And then Ella starts the conversation. And it was it ended up just being a useless conversation. And I do agree with Whitney where I don't think Hella Hella Ella really wants to listen. She just kind of you can see in the conversation, like she's like raising her voice and she needs to l really learn how to better communicate with people because I'm sorry, if you and Ty wanna fucking yell back and forth with each other, do what you gotta do, okay? But when it comes to your friends or other people that you care about, you need to learn how to fucking talk to people and be respectful because Whitney might be able to stay calm in that situation, but please believe me, if I was there, I'm like, girl, you better raise, your tone better come down a couple notches because you're not gonna talk to me any kind of way. Okay, we can have a conversation, we could be calm, but do not raise your voice at me. I don't take kindly to that, and that triggers me personally, right? So Ella, again, is like doing this, 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 but not listening. And Whitney was like, girl, it's like talking to a fucking wall. And Ella says, well, I feel the same way with you, but she's literally telling you the reasons as to why she thinks that you're selfish and she goes to say me calling you selfish doesn't mean that you're not a good person it's just this is a trait that you have and maybe you're unaware of it and you refuse to acknowledge this trait of yours but this is a trait that you have and we've witnessed this and you do things where you don't consider other people's um feelings or their time you put yourself first Okay, she broke it down. She gave you reasons. You disagree with it. And you think it's just because of the smug thing. She was hurt by the smug thing. Because again, like she said, when she was talking to Jess, Sammy and them, I could have picked you. Because honestly, you guys are smug. I could have picked y'all. But because you're my friend, I didn't do that. Right? But you, you're like, you picked them basically they, because they won the, the challenge. And y'all were jealous. Well, especially Ty. But... She's giving you reasons. She's explaining things. And you are just like, nope, I'm just focused on this and this is it. And Whitney even goes to say, like, she takes a step back and says, you know what? Normally when I tell you things, I say with love. And I think this is later on when she said it. But Ella was just like, well, yeah, let's just go. And that, that was really the conversation. It was just a waste of time. And honestly, and Ella is someone that's difficult to talk to because she doesn't listen. And you saw that. Like, Whitney was just like... But you're not listening. She's giving you the reasons. She's saying the things. And you don't really have a reason. You're just saying you're fixated on it just being, oh, it's because of the challenge, because of the challenge. There has there's elements to that, sure, but it's not just that. I guarantee you, this is the, the shower thing was just a straw that broke the camel's back. It wasn't just that. And like Whitney said, girl, and I think that was in yesterday's episode, girl, you really don't know me well if you think that I'm gonna be petty and this is why I'm gonna come at you like that. Like, girl, please be smart okay so after they come back ty says basically whitney's the most opinion um, opinionated person in the villa and i'm just like not pot calling kettle I, <laughs> okay and i don't even know if i can say the most opinionated maybe she is i don't i'm not there i don't live there but with them but Ty, you of all people say that. You of all people. I got to put your mouth in everybody's business. You. Please, 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 please. Go take a mirror and look at yourself. And say that again. I, I don't even think you're mature enough to even realize the level, like, the narcissistic, like, tendencies that you have. Like, it's just, A, it's, it's too much. Anyways. Oh, sorry. My bad. Y'all, my notes, I'm, I'm so tired. I'm not even doing this review justice. So this, so in the villa, Ty says that to somebody. I don't know, but I, I wrote the conversation with you. So before they actually leave to go to the villa, um, Whitney or Ella says like, yeah, since we, it's been seven weeks. And it's, so she's basically saying like her, Whitney telling her this one thing is basically throwing away seven weeks of a friendship down the drain because she called you out on one thing. Girl, get a grip, get a grip, girl. Like, come on, Ella. You can't be this fucking self-centered. Like, you cannot be this self-centered. Girl, get a fucking grip. Like, and she goes to say, like, you've been there for me with the tie situation, et cetera, et cetera. And I appreciated that. And I've been there for you as well. And I'm happy for you in your situation. But basically, because she called you out, you're willing to debt a or your friendship. Girl, if that's what it is, bye. Go do you. Like, the fuck? Um, so Whitney's like, girl, it's like speaking to a walk with you, which I already mentioned earlier. And then Ella was like, you know, what? let's just go back because, and let's go back and just take a step back. And as they're going back again, when they're going in, she just walked past and this, couldn't even leave the door open for the girl, but whatever. I'm like, honestly, this, if this conversation, for those of you that don't think that she's self-centered, 
and egotistical and selfish. If this conversation didn't show y'all that, then I'm sorry, y'all are fucking idiots. Y'all, whoever watched this and re saw this and was like, nah, no, nah, Whitney's wrong, Whitney's wrong, Whitney's wrong. You're a fucking idiot. I said what the fuck I said, okay? Oh, la, la. Anyways, so when they come back in, um, they're kind of just like ignoring each other. Like they walk past each other. Uh, when, no, they're in their dressing room. They don't really say anything to each other. And then they walk past each other. And then Whitney, hmm, put her ego aside. And you know how hard it is to put, when you're annoyed about something, you put your pride aside because you care about somebody to just be like, you know what, let me just be the bigger person. She put her ego aside and just, um, and gave Ella a hug. And Ella, Ella was just like this. And then Ella goes to say, like, you really hurt me with that comment. And Winnie's like, you know what, fine. I apologize for hurting your feelings. Honestly, see. Winnie, you're a better woman than me. Because, bitch, if you don't want to talk, we don't have to talk. We can walk by here. I would be... <laughs> we don't have to talk. So, Whitney and Ella debrief to their partners about the conversation. Um, Lachlan wants to try to be a peacemaker again. And um, this part of the conversation, I liked kind of what I saw. You know, we got to see them a little bit more and them interacting and the little thing that was that last night in the nighttime when this part happened? I think it was in the nighttime. So there was a part where they were like, Whitney was like, yeah, we're a favorite couple. And then they both said smug and started cracking up. That part was cute. So I'm glad um, I saw that. And then he brings up the uh, exclusive thing saying that, like, I know you want it. And Whitney's like, Girl, I didn't say all that. Like, but he just wants to take his time. Lock in load of crap but whatever like i want better for Whitney because i don't i don't think you're the one for her but that's just me in my opinion anyways um yeah that little scene with the cup favorite couple that part was funny to me and then after her and lock and chat again Whitney being a bigger person Whitney calls ella over okay and then she's back to her laughy fun loving ways again and they have a better conversation this time and Whitney apologized again saying you know what I can I can recognize and say that I did not say that with love. I still stand by what I said. I do still think that you're selfish. There you have selfish tendencies. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. But um, I wish I could have said that with love, right? Ella. Ella is one that you have to bow down to because she can't reciprocate that at all. And I'm just like, girl, girl. I I I don't I don't have time. I really don't. Anyways. And um, then they both acknowledge that they basically have a sisterly relationship. And that's why you're trying to distance her when you when you did that in the in the other episode. You're like, you know, you be act like we're a family. We're not the shit that you did. Anyways, I'm glad they squashed it. I'm glad they've reconciled. I hope that this won't put a stain in them moving further. Um, but I do think they're both stubborn. We've seen that. But honestly, one person's stub more stubborn than the other. We saw who backed down who put their ego aside, and who just wanted to make peace later on. We saw, okay? So Ella, please work on that because having a girl being stubborn, and hey, I'm a stubborn ass person, okay? Being stubborn, girl. When you're a little too stubborn, it will hurt you, okay? So work on that. But I'm glad they reconciled, and I hope that they can maintain to have a friendship later on, but... Honestly, I think Ty definitely has a vendetta against Whitney because basically she called him. She, I mean, it, it wasn't like she said, you're not a good guy. She just said, like, Ella, don't be focusing just on cute guys. Like, be open, okay? And that's why he made that dig at her. But clearly, him, Zach, everybody in the fucking house has a vendetta against her and Molly as well. And all you motherfuckers need to shut the fuck up, okay? Just included, fake-ass bitch. Anyways, so now we have Jess and Whitney talking and now Jess disclosed, you know, yeah, um, you know, sometimes you can be really honest and, you know, maybe you just need to learn how to how to take it. Okay. As a friend, I can appreciate you telling me that. And you, you see, anyways, anyways, um, and then Winnie discloses in this conversation that um, she's scared with Lockin because it's like he just read the Whitney Bible and everything just seems too good to be true. I'm like, girl, smart, smart girl. Be aware of that because that's what it's giving to me. I don't trust him. Don't. And then Abby chats with Whitney and Lockin. And I think um, Scott was like walking to the bathroom or something. And basically brings up the fact that like he chats with the boys more than he chats with me. And 
and then she complains about how he doesn't bring her coffee and breakfast or whatever. And Whitney's like, yo, if a man wanted to, he would. True. Okay. And Lockin says, I'll speak to him. And Whitney's like, no, no. Uh, what did you say? No, fuck you. No, she said, she said, no, fuck your peas. That's what she said. <laughs> Respectfully. Okay. And she said that she needs to talk to him. As in, Abby needs to talk to him. And when she said it respectfully, it made me think of Nicole Davis. Shout out to her. You guys should check out her channel. Y'all, I am about to fall asleep. I am so fucking tired. If, if I have the energy to even edit this, that would be a miracle. But I am literally falling asleep as I'm recording this right now. Woo, I have, eh. I've been up for, what, what how long? 17, 18 hours? Ooh, Lord to mercy. Anyways, moving on. Um, so after Abby and them have that chat, Abby pulls Scott. And basically, she's just like, yeah, I don't feel like the feelings, you know, it's there and blah, blah, blah. And Scott says, I mean, before they even had the conversation, Scott said, there's always something. He said that. And I was just like, yeah, he's tired of this girl. Okay. He's really tired. He, he's just like, damn, I should have picked Abby. Okay. And then this bitch had the nerve to compare um, Mitch and Scott. You should never do that. That is such an insult, like to your partner to compare another person, their ex, to you know, to that person. It's not okay. And I'm just like, bitch, didn't you say you were done with Mitch? You were this with Mitch? Girl, clearly you still want Mitch, and you know he don't want you. But you don't. You dare to compare Scott to Mitch? Like that's not cool. And you know that. And Scott addressed her like, "I'm not this person. And if there's something that you want, you tell me, and then I'll do it." And maybe he's the type that needs to be nudged to like do things properly. And he's learning. And he, he is young. I mean, you all are all young. But like, or maybe he doesn't like you. And I think he don't like you because again, go back to that. Y'all have seen the clip where he's like this. He smiles and he's looking up to Catherine and they're talking. He don't give you that. Even when you're talking, he's just kind of like, kind of looking in the distance. He don't like you. It, it is what it is. Like, it, you're just a person of convenience for the moment and it, it is what it is. Like, it, it, sorry, girl. I don't know what you want to do. Oh, God, this is long. I'm tired. Eh, let me, I'm going to rush through this part right now because I'm tired. So Sammy employs um, Ty to basically gather the, the house to go to the terrace. And then when they get to the terrace, they're going to say... He wants you to be his girlfriend or he, whatever the fuck they said, okay? I'm just like, okay, whatever. Um, I just rub my eyes. This whole thing, I'm just rubbing my eyes. So, I will say, Nell's boots that she was wearing, girl, love those boots. Anybody know where them boots are from? Let me know because those are cute as fuck. I love it. The, the knee-high boots that were, like, transparent and black. Mm, cute AF. Anyways, so he has a speech where he isolates um, Jess and says, yeah, it's been a roller coaster. I just called it the roller coaster speech. Jess is happy. So he does his speech and then he's like, hey, and then Ty and everybody to do the thing. Will you be his girlfriend? Funny, right? He couldn't say it. He had them say it. So I feel like he had them say it. So like if he has to have a cop out, you're like, bitch, I never said I wanted you to be my girlfriend. The group asked you on my behalf. I didn't say it. Anyways, the girls are happy for Justin. I'm just like, why? Y'all a fake. Like, you're happy for her for what? With this motherfucking girl, please. Uh-uh. No. And then Abby complains again in the dressing room about fucking Scott. And then um, Lockin tells Scott, like, man, help your... Because Scott says, help me. Scott said, help... I mean, Lockin said, help yourself out. Bro, you're wasting her time. True? And then I'm just like, the parents are coming in. Why are there no more bombshells? I wanted a bombshell for Scott so he could leave this fucking Abby bitch. That's what I wanted. But there are no more bombshells. So, I mean, I'm assuming there's no more bombshells because after the parents, I don't know. I don't know if the baby challenge is first and then the parents come or if the parents come and then there's the baby challenge. But one of them, right? That's what happens usually. So I'm like, there ain't no more bombshells coming in. So that's what it is. Unfortunately, they, they dealt a terrible card to Scott and he's just in a terrible situation. He's stuck with this girl, unfortunately. Girl... Y'all, if this video comes out in the middle of the night or in the morning, then yeah, I persevered because the way I am drowsy, the way I am tired, plus I already know this video is fucking like 40 minutes long probably, and it will take me as much time to actually edit it because any parts where I made mistakes or this, that, and the other, I have to cut it out. Oh la la. I'm so tired. But I pushed through. I'm glad it's done. 
at least um, tomorrow is, well, I don't even know if tomorrow's gonna be my day off because I have to edit this video. It's already tomorrow, it's already tomorrow, it's midnight, it's, it's already tomorrow. <laughs> y'all, for me pushing through, y'all better fucking amp up them motherfucking likes. Y'all better fucking come up the fuck out of this goddamn video because this has been one hell of a day for me today. And I really wasn't even trying to be here. I'm, eh, anyways, I'm not gonna go into all the details, but I will shout out you all on Monday. For those of you that have forgotten to shout out, I'm just so tired right now. I just, I can't, I don't have it in me. But thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And your girl will be back soon for a new video. Peace out, bisou, and hugs. Mm. <laughs> I'm scared. Ooh, ooh.